Let's kick off with this. There are forces here at home trying to tear us apart. On too many occasions recently, our streets have been hijacked by small groups who are hostile to our values and have no respect for our democratic traditions. Hmm. So I don't know about you, but I'm still trying to figure out what possessed an unelected prime minister to address the nation from outside his Downing Street bunker rather than that very expensive taxpayer funded studio we saw during COVID. Fundamentally, he was warning us of the dangers faced from extremist groups who, in his words, are trying to tear us apart. Was he seriously trying to address the perceived problem of firebrand George Galloway winning another by-election with this speech? An unelected PM criticising a democratic election result, framing a free and fair vote as a threat to democracy because their guy didn't win, because Sunak's policies on the war in Gaza perhaps are out of step with what many voters on the streets are calling for. I say a free and fair election, but that's not entirely true. Uh, the reform candidate, Simon Danchuk, received a death threat. He and staff had to move out of their campaign office. Uh, there are allegations of poor behaviour. They're being thrown around by both Labour, Reform and Galloway's uh, Workers' Party too, and polling stations were heavily policed. Nevertheless, last night we heard, what, for 10 minutes, the PM's thoughts on extremism. Without one single word, though, on the appalling and widely condemned Islamophobic comments of his former Home Secretary, Suella Bravman, former Deputy Party Chairman, Lee G. Beebees Anderson, uh, Immigration Minister Robert Jenrick, and we could probably chuck Liz Truss in there as well, who warned of an extremist winning the by-election. Anderson was stripped of the party whip for falsely claiming the London Mayor Sadiq Khan was controlled by Islamists. And yet Suella Braverman escaped unpunished, not even criticised really by the Prime Minister for saying the whole country was run by anti-Semite Islamists and not by Mr Sunak. And then not a single Tory minister this past week called out this blatant bigotry for what it was, which is Islamophobic racism. And then Sunak, Sunak has the gall to lecture the rest of us. Islamist extremists and the far right feed off and embolden each other. They are equally desperate to pretend that their violence is somehow justified when actually these groups are two sides of the same extremist coin. So he, he rightly mentioned both far-right extremism and Islamist extremists, but whenever he had to choose an example of an extremist to share with viewers, he went with Palestinian peace marchers rather than some of the hate peddlers on his own benches. Now, I, I have to say, I, I can't deny I was a little surprised by Labour leader Keir Starmer's decision to praise the speech, perhaps from the point of view of protecting MPs from thuggery. And on that point, I think we must all agree. But with Labour warned of the dangers maybe it faces if it continues to ignore the feelings of Muslim voters over Gaza... Maybe that's not such a surprise. Uh, and it's also worth noting, I mean, Ed Davey was I mean, absolutely damning of the speech. Uh, but Sunak's words drew plaudits, uh, front page glorious plaudits from the Daily Mail's Quentin Letts. And of course, the Daily Mail itself has a long history of publishing Islamophobic articles. And Letts himself has previously been accused of blatant racism. This was a few years back by the Royal Shakespeare Company, after suggesting the only reason one actor was in a play was due to the colour of his skin. So you've got a guy accused of, of racism working for a paper that publishes Islamophobic articles praising the Prime Minister. That's one side of the story. And then you've got many others, from Ed Davey down, feeling that an unelected PM lecturing us on extremism when doing nothing about it, apparently, on his own back benches, is a little rich. Well, joining me first to discuss, and I would love to hear from you, dear listeners, of course, 0345 973 is the number. You can message me, you can communicate however you like. Uh, but I'm going to speak first to Peter Oborn, former political commentator of The Spectator, Daily Telegraph, and The Daily Mail to boot. Good morning to you, Peter. Yeah, could I mention I'm the current author of a book on this subject? You may indeed. Fate of Abraham, uh, Why the West is Wrong About Islam. And this book goes into much of what you're talking about, this, this use of technical terms, which are very sinister in my view, extremist, Islamist, and so on. These la the language which was used, has been used by Rishi Sunak over the last few days and his and his um, far right colleagues, in my view, it uh, looks like it, doesn't it, on the on the Tory benches. I mean, Peter, I, I, you you yourself, you, you you have been on the political right for uh, writing about it more recently. I can clearly detect concerns from you about the direction the Conservative Party is going in. 
What was Sunak's intention last night? Well, it's very interesting. And I think Alan Rusbridge, the editor of the Guard, former editor of the Guardian, put it rather well. Is this the advice of um, MI5? He's acting on, or, or, or his political strategist, Isaac Lebido. Is, in other words, is there something real going on which he has to go out for the first time in his time in number 10 and, and make a speech about a national emergency? Or is he confecting a national emergency to suit the strategy of the Conservative Party, which is lagging massively in the polls? And, and they want to sort of seize the initiative somehow by confecting something. Well, you say you say confecting, but threats by Islamist terrorists uh, are the dominant threat in the UK, accounting for something like three quarters uh, of terror threats. Far right accounting for, for most of the others. Sunak has, has got grounds to go out and make the claim. My concern oh, is, is it, yeah. go, go. Well, he's cut, he's done it on the back of the Roth, the Rochdale by election, and I presume the events in Parliament. We had no evidence. If, if, there, if there is a violent threat by any kind of extremist, the police would arrest them, it's against the law, uh, and they'd be uh, charged uh, and sent to jail. Agreed. He provided no, no evidence. And look, the voters of Rochdale have put in a, a candidate that obviously embarrasses Keir Starmer and... Um, and Rishi Sunak, and he's fought on the... Uh, mis and basically, Mr Galloway went on the issue of the um, uh, of the failure of either main party to call for a ceasefire. And he was fighting on the Gaza issue, where he's actually aligned with the mass of the British population, whatever your opinion of Mr Galloway is. Now, if you want to make allegations that he or Palestinian protesters are, are being violent and using threats uh, and intimidation... Well, they've got to stand them up. And I, I, I can see this is a, a punch on the nose to the cosy Westminster consensus, what, which, has stat, which is supporting Britain sending arms to Israel, while what looks which, what, while the, what the International Court of Justice says is may well be a genocide. And we're seeing these awful pictures every day. Now, who are the extremists in all of this? 